Number 63 is a problem that I bet a lot of you looked at and didn't even know where to get started on, just because the directions are unique. It's not like anything else that we've been doing. They give you this weird, goofy, implicitly defined equation right here, and they ask you to find all points on the curve where the tangent line is horizontal. They even gave you a picture here. It turns out that this uh, particular equation is an ellipse, but not one of the nice ones you've learned to deal with over the last couple years. It's kind of a slanted diagonal ellipse. All right, what I want to focus on, guys, is the idea about what we know about a tangent line being horizontal. The key to that, guys, is that in a horizontal tangent line, the slope of that tangent is going to equal zero. And the slope of our tangent is given to us by our derivative. So we're really trying to find every point on this curve where the derivative has a value of zero. So let's dive in. Let's start differentiating here term by term. First term, derivative of 3x squared, that has just x's, no y's in it, so that's just a straightforward power rule, 6x, done. Now, power rule here as well, but because it's a y, there's a little wrinkle at the end there. There's going to be an 8y and then times the dy dx from, from implicit differentiation. The, where this one gets tough is right here. Taking the derivative of 3xy is going to require the product rule. And I'd probably put the 3x together as the first factor and the y as the second. So here we go. First factor, that's just going to be 3x multiplied by the derivative of the second, dy dx plus the second factor, which is y, times the derivative of the first. The derivative of 3x is just going to be 3 equals the derivative of 24, or any constant for that matter, is going to be 0. So this is where we're at so far. And let's take a look, guys. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4 terms in this equation, two of which contain dy dx. I'm going to move the 6x over to the right, and I'm going to move that 3y over to the right as well. Then I'm going to factor out my dy dx's and divide by what's left over. But I probably better not do three steps at once. So here we go. 8y dy dx plus a 3x dy dx is equal to, and that's going to be a negative 6x and a minus 3y. Then I'm going to factor out the dy dx's, bring those all the way out in front, and then divide by what's left over. So dy dx will equal, here we go, negative 6x minus 3y all over, leave us with an 8y and a plus 3x. And that is what we have for our derivative. Now, they want us to find everywhere on this curve where the tangent line is horizontal, meaning where this derivative has a numerical value of zero. So how are we going to do that? Well, I want to remind you guys that when you're dealing with a quotient like this derivative is, the only way that a fraction can ever equal zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. So really, I'm just multiplying both sides by this 8y plus 3x, and then it just wipes out when I multiply that by zero. So I just want to set my numerator, negative 6x minus 3y equal to zero and solve. Now what might bother you right here, guys, is that this is a two variable equation. It doesn't have just one nice solution like x equals five. All I can really do here is express one variable in terms of the other. But that's gonna help us here in a way we haven't dealt with before. Let me show you what I mean. It really doesn't matter here if you solve for x or for y. I am going to, I'm, I'm trying to look ahead right here, guys. I'm gonna solve this thing for y. So I'm going to get negative 3y is equal to a positive 6x over there on the right side. And then, just so I don't have to scroll yet, let's divide by negative 3. We're going to get y equals 6 divided by negative 3 is a negative 2 multiplied by x. Now, like I said, this doesn't give us a numerical value, but it tells us that this answer can occur. We can have a horizontal tangent line anytime your y-coordinate is equal to negative 2 times your x-coordinate. Okay, now what does that do for us? What we're going to do now is find everywhere on the original curve up here in black that our y-coordinate is equal to negative 2 times your x coordinate. So I'm going to bring this equation down here, but I'm going to replace all of the y's with a negative 2x. So I've got a 3x squared 
plus 4, and the y right there becomes a negative 2x, and we've got to square that, gotcha, plus 3x multiplied by another y, which is negative 2x, all of which has to equal 24. And now, you guys, this is down to a one variable equation. I think I can, well, hopefully, solve this thing for x. Let's see what we can do with this. 3x squared, gotcha. And then, okay, negative 2x squared times itself is 4x squared times 4. That's going to be a plus 16x squared. And then right here, we've got a minus 6x squared all of which equals 24. 3 plus 16 uh, is 19. 19 minus 6, oh, this is bad, is a, I have that right, is a 13x squared, which is equal to 24. Now, what I was expecting to see right here is that we would divide by the 13, and I was hoping we were going to get a nice number right there, but we ended up with x squared equals ugh, 24 over 13, and then we would take the square root of both sides and get x equals plus or minus ugh, the square root of 24 over 13. That makes me wonder if I didn't goof something up right here, guys, so I'm going to pause for just a second, go back and check my work. I'll pick it back up in just a moment. Okay, I look things over, and no, everything's right. I checked the solutions manual, and this is the same ugly thing they came up with. I wonder if there wasn't a typo or a transcription error involved here, because I really thought that maybe this 24 over 13 should have become a 24 over 12. I'd be much happier dealing with the square root of 2 rather than the square root of 24 over 13. But regardless, that's what we've come up with here for y. And now, going back and reading the original problem, we're supposed to come up with all of the, the entire points here where that tangent line is horizontal. So we've come up with two values right here, guys, two x values where this would happen. Now to figure out the y values that go along with that, we would need to plug those back in to this equation right here. And I tell you what, guys, at this point, I'm going to tell you and I'm going to let you guys off the hook. I think that's probably more trouble than it's worth. What really worries me is this term right here, that this would get kind of nasty. So I think if we just got the x values right there for problem number 63, I think that's probably good enough. So I'm certainly not going to throw anything this complex at you guys on a quiz or a test. So uh, there's that. But I do want you guys kind of thinking about what these directions might mean. This is exactly the type of question they might ask you on the AP test, probably not in such a, a nasty setting right here, but finding spots where a tangent line is horizontal, they're going to want you to be able to interpret what that means. A horizontal tangent line means your slope of your tangent is zero, which means your derivative has to be zero. And I think this was an important thing to take about it as well. When your derivative is a fraction, it'll only equal zero when your numerator is equal to zero. So those are some things that I think are good takeaways from this problem, even though the final answer was going to be really, really ugly, and I think more trouble than it was probably worth.